tune in to Dr. Lucy Nganga's new broadcast on YouTube and Facebook Live. You can listen in from wherever you are, at your workplace during your breaks. God will provide for us a way. At home, we are his children. He will make a way for us. On your phone and other family. You can survive difficult times for believing in the word of the prophet and obeying it and doing it. Subscribe to Deborah Company YouTube channel and click the bell icon to receive notifications. You can also follow us on Facebook at Deborah Company. For more information, please call us on 716 919 783 Deborah Company Raising Women Ministers We've been talking about fruitfulness or the fruit of the spirit and I think we are now coming to a place where we'll be wrapping it up as the Lord will guide us and I've been talking more on the life of Joseph and how Joseph was fruitful in the land of his affliction because we must be fruitful. God expects a fruit all the time. Jesus cast the fig tree because it did not have fruit, yet it was not the season of the figs. And therefore, every time God comes, he is expecting a fruit. Let me start by looking at Matthew chapter 3, verse 7 to 13 or I can actually look at from verse 10 because of time. The Bible says, and even now, the acts, or let me read from verse 7. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not think to say to yourselves we have Abraham as our father for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones and even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees and you know trees in the Bible is a consistent symbol of the believer he shall be planted like a tree by the water side. We are oaks, for example, of righteousness. Many times the scripture will refer to us as trees. And the Bible says, and even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire without exception. Don't move, but let me quote John chapter 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Every tree in me that does not bear fruit, I cut it, and it is thrown into the fire, without exception. I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And one of the reasons why... The Lord has given us the Holy Spirit is so that we can be fruitful. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to bear fruit. That's why the Bible talks about the fruit of the Spirit. His winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly, thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So we see that it's very serious. Uh, this topic we've been talking about, please don't, uh, don't belittle it. Don't uh, take it for granted. Don't think it's just another uh, series. You need to start checking your life, looking at yourself to see if you are bearing fruit. Now, going back to Joseph, we talked about Joseph. Joseph is a fruitful boar a fruitful bore by the well, Genesis chapter 49. And we know why Joseph bore fruit until the word of God came to pass in him. The word of the Lord tested him. And we've been talking about how God makes us to bear fruit 
through afflictions. And I have shared about how to behave during afflictions, and I want to finish it up today as the Lord will help me. And we'll say T is for thanksgiving, R is for resilience, I is for intercession, A is for advancing, and I want to talk about L, which is loyalty. Loyalty. When we pass through trials, we must be loyal. And the last one is S, self-examination. We must make up our mind, like Joseph, to remain loyal even in the times of trials. What is loyalty? According to the dictionary, being loyal means to show firm and constant support or allegiance to a person. And in this case, we are talking about showing firm and consistent support and allegiance to God. Joseph remained faithful to God. You remember when he was tempted by the wife of Potiphar, he said, how can I do such an evil thing against my God? His loyalty remained steadfast. His loyalty remained constant. Imagine he is in a foreign land. Imagine he belonged to the family that God had prophesied about. He has a big dream, and yet he ends up being a slave, and not a slave in his home, a slave in a foreign land, and a slave with the heathens. But Joseph remained faithful. He remained loyal to his God. His loyalty was towards God. Unfortunately, there are many people who become disloyal when they pass through difficult times. When they pass through difficult times. And there are reasons why people do that. One of the things I've observed is that when you go through trials, there are very many voices that come to speak to you as to why you are going through, why you are going through, whatever you are going through. You know, like Job had two friends of his that came to tell him why he was going through. And most of the time, People come to ask you to reject God, especially those who are your relatives. Many times they will tell you, we told you, we told you about this salvation. We told you about this church. In fact, many tell you, we have been telling you that you are lost. And they distract you. I've seen many people depart from God, depart from the ways of God, or disconnect themselves from the house of God because of their voices. That is why when you pass through trials, you must allow God to speak to you. Because you know, as we read, that in every temptation, God provides a way of escape. But you must really be careful about the voices in your life. Because many will come to confirm what they have been telling you, and many people get offended with God. Let's go to Job chapter 1, verse 22. Job chapter 1, verse 22, and we read about Job. You know the story. The Bible says, let's read from 20. It is well, you know I always do that. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground. And what did he do? He worshipped. That was his first reaction. And I told you, you know, when you go through trials, have an attitude of thanksgiving, and we think thanksgiving is adoration. We think thanksgiving is uh, joy. We think thanksgiving is gladness, It's melody. The Bible says making melody in our hearts to the Lord. And that's the first thing Job did. He fell to the ground. He worshipped. And he said, naked, I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall, shall I return there. You know, one of the things you have to come into terms with is that you brought nothing. That is what Paul will say in First Timothy chapter 6. He says, we brought nothing to this world and will surely take out nothing. There is nothing you have that you are not given. You came into the world naked, without any clothes, without nothing. Naked you came, and naked you will return. And you know, that's a very good attitude to have during trials. You know, 1 Timothy 6, 7. For we brought nothing. 
you know, learning to be content in whatever state you are. For we brought nothing. We didn't bring money. One of the things my family has taught me, uh, especially me and Jewel, uh, Jewel Joroge now, we congratulate you, is that, you know, me and Jewel, okay, I shouldn't have mentioned names, but anyway, I have. Uh, are people who are very careful. You know, we like to spend wisely. You know, we are investors. You know, we save, all that kind of thing. Uh, let me not mention the others. Uh, <laughs> but the others live their lives. They are happy. They are very happy, you know, spending and, you know, whatever. And I have come to learn, really, I need to be like them to some extent because I brought nothing to this world. And it is certain we will carry absolutely nothing. We'll go with nothing. So learn to enjoy your life. I like to throw some of this, uh, you know, because there are some of us, especially the ladies that are too, too, too stiff. Today I had a dream uh, with one of us, uh, not my family, one of us in the church. I won't say who, but uh, one of the things the Lord was putting in my heart is that I may tell them not to be so stiff, not to be so stiff in terms of, you know, investments. They need to relax a little bit. And lo and behold, in the morning, they were already writing to me on what they want to invest in. And therefore, I knew God wanted me to speak to them. I haven't spoken to them. I'm sure they are watching. God is saying, relax. You brought nothing to this world, and you surely take out nothing. He says, if we have food and raiment, we'll be content thereof. But anyways, Job said naked. He first worshipped God. He lost everything. He lost everything. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb. And naked shall I return there. The Lord gave. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 22 says, in all this. Job did not sin nor charge God with the wrong. Because there are many people that start to ask God, where were you? That's a very rude question to ask God. And if you have done that, repent today. It's disrespect. It's dishonor. Thank God I liked the program this morning for the children. And thank you, teachers, Teacher Rose, Teacher Helen, and all the teachers. Uh, you know, but today they were talking about God is everywhere. God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. And God is not only everywhere. God knows everything. He is omniscient. He is omnipresent. So you cannot ask him, where were you? You know, you can't even tell God he come and he send no one. That's being rude to God. That's being disrespectful. It's your mother who taught you that. You need to recant it in the name of Jesus. God knows these things. In all these things, Job did not sin nor charge God with the wrong. You know, there are many people that charge God with the wrong. I don't want to mention names, but, uh, you know, recently we had one of the prominent people going through a certain, uh, you know, situation. And at that point, a person who is a believer said, I don't know God anymore. I don't think God is there. Why? Because everyone charges God with wrong. In fact, the, 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 the churches, the preachers have made man to be the center and then God is a servant of the man. So every time is what God will do for you. God will bless you. God, da, 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 da. God yeah, but you, what are you doing? And many people have made God to be their servant. But Job is a wise man. In all these things, God did, uh, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. We have to desist from charging God with wrong. In fact, after you have worshipped God, as we will see towards the end, you must know how to do self-examination. To look inward. That is one of the things I've done through this COVID season, is to look inward to myself and to our church. Job chapter 2, verse 7 to 10, the Bible says, So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And you know, let me read from verse 1. It's okay. If we don't do the other one, we'll still have time. 
Again, there is a day the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Interesting, eh? Isn't it? Satan also did what? Presented himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come from? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? I mean, what a testimony. What a testimony that he was the most blameless man on the earth, a blameless and an upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil, and he still holds fast to his integrity, to his loyalty. Although you incited me against him, he, he, me, against him to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. By the way, God talks to Satan. We see it right here. He's conversing with Satan. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. That is Satan. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh. And he will surely cast you to the face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your hand. But do what? Spare his life. God would never allow Satan to touch Job's life. Amen. Amen. Because God knew as long as your life is intact, you can recover whatever you have lost. Amen. Hallelujah. So God will never allow you. He will never allow your foot. Yeah, he will not. He may touch your things, but God will never touch or allow Satan to touch your life. Because why? Your life is hidden in Christ, in God. Amen. Hallelujah. So you can lose everything, but Satan will never touch your life. And the next verse says, verse 7, So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took for himself a pot shed with which to scrap himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Then his wife, that is why wives, we must be very careful. He said to him, do you still hold fast your integrity or your loyalty? You see, loyalty has to do a lot with integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is largely determined by how you live your private life. And I'll be mentioning that as we uh, go towards the end of this. Curse God and die. Many people will blame God on your behalf. If you don't blame God, others will come to blame God on your behalf. But he said, look at Job's response. He said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaks. The women of grace, we are not foolish. We are wise. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. In fact, in Job chapter 13, I want to read it, Verse 15, he says something very powerful that I would like you to say today and make your confession. Though he slay me, yeah, yet I will trust him. Even so, I will defend my ways, my own ways before him. Let's read it. If you are at home, if you are here, we are going to shout until you hear we are very many to make you feel uh, long for coming. They're coming together. One, two, we go. Though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. That was his testimony. Because Job knew as long as God slay him, as long as he was in God's hand, God was doing a work. Even if you are told, you would not believe it. Because the end is always better than the, the, the beginning. Amen? Because the end is predetermined by God. It's a destination. Look at Daniel chapter 3. I want to read Daniel chapter 3 about the Hebrew boys also. They remained loyal in the land of their slavery. 
You know, slavery means a place where you have no rights, a place where you are oppressed, a place where you may not have anything. You know, the Bible says, you know, after Nebuchadnezzar had ordered them to worship an image of gold, and you know, that image of gold represents material things, material wealth, money. And right now, there is always an inclination for people to worship money. That's why the Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. God does not say you cannot serve God and the devil. But you cannot serve God and mammon. And in verse 18, you know, they refused to worship. They refused to worship the, the, the image. They refused to bow to the traditions and ways of Babylon right from the beginning. And they said, let's read 17. They said, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, you can see their confidence, their loyalty in God, is able to deliver us from burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. That's the confidence we have, even in this corona. We believe God will save us. We believe God will protect us, including even protecting our jobs and everything. And our lives. And we have seen that. I mean, I've seen so many people promoted within our, our, our church during this time. But if not, that's the point. He said he will. But even if he does not, let it be known to you. Now, that is loyalty. Amen. They said if, they said God will save us from your hand. But even if he doesn't, look at what NLT will say. NLT will say, but even if he does what? He does it. Because it's not every time God will remove you from calamity. I mean, he's able to. God allowed Joseph to be sold with his dream. God allowed Joseph to be thrown to prison. Had Joseph sinned against God? Had Joseph sinned against God? Not at all. In fact, it is his loyalty that made him to be thrown to prison. This Hebrew boy will say, but even if he doesn't, that's a resolution you have to make in your heart. That God, I know my God will help me, but even if he doesn't. Why? Naked I came and naked I returned. Amen. We want to make it clear to you, your majesty. That we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. Right there. What? Loyalty. I mean, they were going to die. In fact, they were thrown into the fire. And let's read it. Still in NLT, that's okay. Simpler language. Verse 19. Verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and expression on his face, charged toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they, they, they hit the furnace. How many times? Seven. Perfectly. More than it was usually heated. Verse 20. And he commanded certain men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those who, men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And if you are charismatic, we will say, God will burn all your enemies. <laughs> But we are not. We are apostolic people. <laughs> we bless our enemy. We cast. Uh, we, we don't cast our enemy. You know, we allow God to take vengeance for us. Hallelujah. Bless your enemies. You know, pray for those who despitefully misuse you. That's what the Bible says. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. And King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished as he arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of fire? 
They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Look, he answered, I see how many? Four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt and the form of the fourth one is like the son of God. He saw the son of God. Why? Because of the loyalty of these three Hebrew boys. We must remain loyal no matter what. See Job, going back to Job again. Job 42, verse 1 to 6. You know, Job conversed with God during his trials. In fact, he lost it whenever he gave a lot of his time conversing with his friends. But whenever he conversed with God, you know, during trials, instead of looking east or west, look at God. He conversed with God. Then Job replied, you can go and read uh, the verse, chapter 41, but let me read from verse uh, 1 of 42. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything. And no one can stop you. I'm still reading from NLT. You asked, who is that, this that questions my wisdom with ignorance? Can you imagine it was the wisdom of God for Job to pass through whatever he passed through? It is I, and I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far, far too wonderful for me. Verse 4, you said, listen, and I will speak. During trials, it's time to listen to God. I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. That is why I will talk about self-examination into your own life. I had only heard about you, but now, what have I done? I have seen you with my own eyes. During trials was the time to see God with his own eyes. Amen. You better be like the man who say, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be in the vines, though the labor of the olive may fall, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high heels. Habakkuk says that. That even though the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord my God. That is loyalty. You cannot afford to hate God during your afflictions. Why must we be, remain loyal? You can write this. One, because we know God is always there. He is omnipresent. He is always there with us. David will say in this very common scripture that though I walk through, though I walk through Psalms 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There are moments we walk through. We only don't stop. You walk through. You must remain loyal, constant, moving forward to God. So we know God is always there. Number two, we remain loyal because the Lord will always come through for us. The Lord will always come through for us. I like what Habakkuk will say, and I love this scripture because uh, God spoke to me one time in this scripture. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. Habakkuk 2, verse 3, the Bible says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Why? Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Surely come and it will not tarry. We must know that the Lord will always come through for us. The only thing is that there could be time. You must always consider the time factor. Because times and seasons are 
determined by God. The Bible says at the appointed time. God told Abraham, at the appointed time, I will return. At the appointed time. It is God who called Abraham. It is him who promised him to bless him. But yet God allowed him to walk through a period of time where God tested him so many times. And the ultimate test was when God asked him to sacrifice his own son. But before that, as he was waiting, he said, at the appointed time, I will return. Number three, we are loyal during trials because we know after the testing, we come into a new level of glory. Amen. Let me read for you this very common verse. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12. The Bible says, Do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. The next verse. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. Why? For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Amen. The spirit, there is something called the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. It rests upon you when you go through trials, especially when you go through them because of Christ. Romans 8 verse 17 will say, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God. Can you imagine? We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. I said the other day, there is no glorification. There is no glorification without being tested. The Bible tells us, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. So glory is conferred only to those who endure, those who overcome. I will ask you in your own time to read Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3, but there are several scriptures there that shows when we persist, when we continue to be loyal during trials, what will happen to us. 2.7 says, to him who overcomes, I will give to it from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. I like verse 11 says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who are, whoever comes shall not be hurt by the second death. Um, 17 says, and I will give him a white stone. He says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. Right there, revelation, you know, manna has to do with the bread. But now it's not just manna, it's hidden revelation. And I will give him a white stone and on the stone a new name written which no one knows except he who receives it. When you jump uh, to 26 it says, and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end to him I will give power over nations. There is, this is not at the end. Of, you know many people think about the end of the age. No. He will give you power over nations. Just because of overcoming. That is why you must remain loyal to God during your trials. Because as soon as you overcome, I will give him power over nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. And as I also have received from my, from my father. Look at verse 12 of chapter 3. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from heaven from God, and I will write on him my new name. Look at 21 of the same. He says to him, whoever comes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Verse 21, uh, in, uh, uh, we have read it. So there are many things that God has promised us if we remain 
loyal to him. We must overcome. Amen. We must overcome. We must push through. But as we go through trials, we choose not to be offended. We choose not to blame God. We choose to do three things that I will list to you right now. One, we must remain loyal in the way we live our secret life. Remain loyal. In the midst of calamities, there are always many people. In fact, in addition to showing you how God has let you down, many voices will give you solutions to your problems. That's when the enemy comes to whisper to you. That's why Job's wife will tell him, cast God. There are many voices that come to you, but you must remain faithful and loyal in your secret life. That has to do with your moral purity. Let nobody make you so anxious that you leave your place of moral purity, especially sexual purity in this time. That is what jo Joseph was tested in, but he overcame. Number two, you must remain loyal in your finances. Loyal in your finances. During difficult times is when many of us leave our place of faithfulness in the area of finances. But this is the time to be faithful to God in the area of your finances. Making sure that you are faithful. Because why? God never asks for what you don't have. Yeah. God never asks for anything that is beyond you. God looks at the proportion of how you give. So you must remain loyal, irrespective. I mean, you go through sickness, you go through whatever. Make sure your loyalty in the area of finances remains. Because God will test you in that area. And many people in fact, if you want to know that you are backsliding, the first area you relax in is your giving. I always say this, even when people want to leave a church, the first thing they stop to do is to stop giving. When you see somebody has stopped giving, they are loyalty. The Bible says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Let me say that again. Jesus said, where your treasure is, that is where your heart will be. So, wherever your treasure is, if it is in God, you remain loyal in your giving. Let me give you my own secret. I learned whenever I get money, I remove God's portion up front. Up front. Up front. That's what I do first so that I don't forget. It's a discipline that you build into yourself. And I've taught my children the same. I pray God will help them to do the same. Teach your children the first thing you do up front. Because you meet an old prophet on the way. So up front. Up front. Right now, you don't even need to pass. Before I would pass through the church the same day. Because there were no, you know, electronic ways of giving money. But now we are so techy. I mean, from your, from your bed, you can give straight from your bank or through M-Pesa. There is no excuse. You, you know, there is a way God will test you in that area. And if you cannot pass the test of money, you're still going through the testing of God. If there is an area God will test you, it's the area of money. And you must remain loyal. And you'll be surprised how God will provide for you when you choose to obey him financially. Amen? Amen? Let that sink. And if you have not been faithful, it's not about giving us tithe and offering because some of you just go there. To be honest with you, we really don't need the tithes and offerings to survive. Why? Because we trust God. And God will give us. If we don't have God, will send a raven to feed us. You know, a raven is an unclean animal. A raven is, is one who is not holy. And let God not 
feed us through ravens when you're here. Hallelujah. But God will feed us. <laughs> By the way, today I'm in charge. So don't worry. I've been set and I'm an apostle, I told you on Friday, apostle sent by Pastor James to preach to you. But you must remain loyal to God. It is not the will of God. By the way, you know, it was not God's will for Paul to be a tent maker. In fact, he was pushed by circumstances to be. If you read his uh, writings to the Corinthians, because Corinthians were one of the churches that were very unfaithful in giving. And he talks a lot to them about giving. Whether you read 1 Corinthians chapter 9 or you read 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9. And he says, don't we have a right like others to reap? If we have sown to you spiritual things, we reap from you material things. But that's not the point I am speaking today. You remain loyal to your God. And let me tell you, God will be moved. And sometimes it's not that time. But the Bible says that he who we cast bread into the waters, we will find it after many days. Give us that scripture in Ecclesiastes. That those who cast their bread upon waters, you know, bread is what you need. Bread is your daily provision. Bread is what sustains you. But yet you can cast it upon the waters. Then you will find it after many days. There are blessings that come to you right now because of the bread you cast many days. You know, giving what is your own sustenance, not tithes, not offerings, not fast fruit, going beyond. You're going to what sustains you in a day. To cast it into the water. You know what is the water? The water is the word of God. You cast what sustains you into the word of God. And we do that by sowing our material things. We must remain faithful. You must keep this in mind. That how you deal with finances is the, one of the most important things. Things that God looks in your life. Cast your bread upon the waters. You will find it after many days. After many days. After many days, you will find the water. You know, you can imagine when you cast bread into the water. Maybe you should try. Show the children today. I'm sure they are listening. Put your bread into the water and see what happens to the bread. Yet you will find it after many days. We must remain loyal, no matter what, no matter what. Check your life. And lastly, we must remain loyal in service, in service, service, serving God. You cannot be aloof. You know, many people, when they pass through difficulties, is when they decide, I cannot serve God. I can't, I can't do, I can't usher, I can't sing, I can't do anything. Yet Joseph, in his suffering, he continued to faithfully serve God. And what happened to him? Jo uh, Joseph was favored by God. There is nothing that attracts favor from God than when you remain in your area of service. That is why David will say, I have been old, young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his children begging bread. Joshua will say, choose you today who you will serve. You know, service is actually what is worship when you serve. And it's not only in the church. You know, serve God. Even when you go to your employer, serve God. Faithfully, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Give us uh, Joshua where he says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, choose you today who you will serve. Now, therefore, fear the Lord, serve him with what? Sincerity and in truth 
and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. Verse 15. And if it is, seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose from yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house will serve the Lord no matter what. I want you to make that resolution today. No matter what will serve the Lord. Let's stand up those who are here and also at home lifting up our hands to God. Blessed be your name. I will serve you Lord. I will serve you. As for me and my house and my entire being will serve the Lord. Will serve the Lord in every way. Will serve the Lord in every way. And you know, serving the Lord means serving his people. The Bible says, in that you have ministered to the saints. That is what serving the Lord is. Includes, in other words. But we better serve the Lord. That's for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Families, don't give up. Some of us are giving up. Don't disintegrate. If you are with your husband and your wife, just hold hands together this day and say, as for me, especially the men, as for me and my house, I want you to do that. Hallelujah. There is a call this morning for service. So if you are there with your wife, your husband, just hold their hands even as we pray. As families, we'll serve the Lord. This morning, I was listening as I was coming to the prophetic words that have come to us, starting from 2013. And maybe Jeff should post all of them so that we can listen to them, especially the corporate prophetic words that came to us. Brethren, we are in for a great assignment by God. And it has not yet happened, but there needs to be a resolution this day. I will serve you. I will serve you, Lord, because I love you. Hallelujah. Tabi, you can come and help me. Thank you, Jesus. Karabo shalama. Yeah. We will serve you because we love you. Maybe you can take it a bit down. We can take it a bit down so that we're able to sing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I will serve you because I love you. You have given life to me. I will serve you because I love you. You have given life to me. I hope you're obeying me. This is what I'm saying. As families, we are holding hands. As families. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So wherever you are as families, even together with their children, let's hold hands as families. Those that are not married, you are individual, it's all right. Amen. I will serve you because I love you. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Because it's a prayer, let me just dictate it. I will serve you because I love you. You have given life to me. I was nothing before you found me. You have given life to me. Just those two. We won't even sing the chorus. And it's a prayer. Families hold hands. Individuals lift up your hands. We are singing this as Fountain Gate Church. There is a great prophetic destiny for us. There is a great work that is coming upon us in this season. And we pray to the Lord. We remain royal. Loyal to Jesus. Loyal to God. Thank you, Jesus. I will serve.
journey, there are many people that have despised us. There are many people that look down on us. You know, I always tell you of a story of some people that used to tell us this cut church. But here we are before the Lord. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you praise. We want nothing before you found us. You have given life to us. Therefore, we will serve you. We will serve you. The Order of Deborah by Dr. Lusenganga, a book that intensively opens up the three-sided face of life and ministry function of a woman. That is the prophetic order, the governmental order, and the family order. To get your copy of The Order of Deborah, please call 0716-919-783. This book is also available at Keswick Bookshop, Textbook Center, and Amazon.com.